Hi, you guys. Good morning. Um, so, mm, alright, so here we are. Um, I'm going to go through step one because there's some things I forgot to add originally. So, as always, I would like to open up in prayer. If you're more than welcome to join me. If It will benefit you if you do. So, <laughs> anyway, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, I come to you, and I just want to thank you, God, for what you're doing. I pray, Father God, for restoration. I pray, Father God, for, for serenity of the things that I have no control over. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Father God, I pray that you will open up our minds and open up our hearts and open up our spirits to receive everything that you have for us today. Father God, help me to decrease so that you can increase in my life and in my words, Father God. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Touch the lives of these people who are watching this. Comfort them. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. I pray that you will put a hedge of protection around us today. Send your heavenly angels down to watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Ooh, and I really needed that because this is my, like, third time trying to make this video, I keep getting cut off, and it's okay, because thy will be done, Lord, thy will be done, it's okay, it's okay, it is okay, <laughs> okay, so sometimes we are powerless, like me, I'm powerless, <laughs> no, just kidding, I have you know, I have power through the Holy Spirit. So, but... Anyway. Sometimes we are powerless because our stations in life. We may be in a situation where other people have power over us. We may feel that we are trapped by demands of others in life and that there's no way out. Oh, man. This is like my old relationship. <laughs> So, no way out to please them all. It's a double bind. To please one is to disappoint another. <clears throat> Sometimes when we feel stuck and frustrated with our relationships, we look for a measure of control by escaping through addictive behaviors. Hagar is a picture of powerlessness. Um... Hagar is um, in Genesis 16 reads Sarah Abraham's wife had not been able to bear any children but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar and Sarah said to Abraham the Lord has prevented me from having children so go and sleep with my servant and I can have children through her. It's crazy. So Abraham agreed to Sarah's proposal. Hey, you know, you give me permission to go sleep with the servant? Gotcha. You know, just kidding. I mean, I hope he was not like that. But, you know, the guys I know. And Anyway. So Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abraham as a wife. This happened ten years after Abraham had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abraham had sexual relations with Hagar, and Hagar became pregnant. And then after that, Sarah began treating Hagar very rudely, very with, with contempt. And Sarah said to Abraham, this is all your fault. This is all your fault. I put my servant 
I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Abraham replied, look, she is your servant, <laughs> so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarah treated Hagar so harshly that Hagar ran away. And then an angel came to visit Hagar and said, Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? And Hagar said, I am running away. He said, no, return to your mistress and you will have more descendants than you can count because her baby that she's going to have is not going to be hers. It's going to be Sarah's. So he said that she will have more children. But you are now pregnant and I will give you a birth. I'll give you, I'll give your birth to a son. I mean, I'll give, and you will give birth to a son that you are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. So, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress, this son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and every, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live open hostility against all his relatives. And very interesting, hmm? So, Hagar is a picture of powerlessness. She had no rights. As a girl, she was a slave to Sarah and Abram. And when they were upset because she couldn't give children, Hagar, had, Hagar was given to Abraham. So, when... Um, blah, 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 blah. return to your mistress and submit to her authority and then he said I will give you more descendants so after Hagar returned to the mistress um, another name referred to the Lord who has spoken to her she said you are the God who sees me she also said have I truly seen the one who sees me so that well was named Beersh. Anyway, um, I'm losing my now. I'm not okay. Okay, so here we are. I think I went too far. I apologize. So mainly, you get the point that Hagar is powerlessness. You know. Hagar is powerlessness and has no rights because she is a servant, right? So, when Hagar could not help herself and recognized her powerlessness over her situation, the angel of the Lord came and ministered to her. Until we recognize that our situation is hopeless without, without outside help, God waits and does not help us. But when we are ready to admit our need and cry out to him, he is ready to step in. Yes, he is. You know, the Lord loves to hear how much we need him. You know, because we do. We need him like we need water and air to breathe. You know, that, anyway, that's a whole other issue. But we do. I mean, I do. I know I need Jesus. <clears throat> so, since God promise of a child had been given, about two years had passed without anything happening. Sometimes the hardest part of recovery is waiting. Here, Abram and Sarah show us what not to do when things don't progress as quickly as we might hope. Rather than accept God's timing, they took matters into their own hands. They assigned a servant girl, Hagar, to be a surgot mother for Abram's son. This solution has been a source of conflict to this day. Abraham's descendants through Hagar are the Arab nations who conflicts with the Jews that keeps the Middle East in, con in constant turmoil.
<clears throat> so when we are caught in no-win situations, it's tempting to run away through our addictive and compulsive behaviors. It is tempting to run away and escape hatches. At times like these, God is there. He is there. And He is listening to our woes. We need to learn to express our pain to God instead of just trying to escape it. He hears our cries and is willing to give us hope for the future. We just have to believe it. You know, God is there for us. He is. And He wants to, He allows us to go through these trials and tribulations in life because He wants us to run to Him for comfort, for safety. You know, for a solid foundation, we need God to, you know, I know in my life, drugs was my number one priority. I put drugs before anybody. And I. I hurt a lot of people, but I was really sick, and I wasn't putting God first. I was putting God, like, third or fourth, I mean, really. I was not putting Him first in my life. Um, and so, since I know I have been putting Him first, He has... He has really put my life back together. And I know what He can do for me, He can do for you. If He did it for me, He can do it for you. Trust me. We can do it. There is not anything God cannot do. So, um, with that said, I will be right back.